teams going along to watch Dundee United and seeing guys like Ralph Mullen, um, he, he's just electric pace, great with the ball at his feet and he scored, usually his goals were spectacular um, and when you're a young guy and you, you just look up to guys like that and he lived the dream that, that we all possess I think of being a guy, a local guy playing for your local team and reaching the heights. and Dundee United 
and when we were all at school growing up, you, you pick one or the other. For me it was Dundee United. And um, we were fortunate that uh, by the late 70s Dundee United were becoming a force in football and um, they, they brought together a team with a manager, Jim McLean. Uh, they were really a force to be reckoned with by then. And uh, it culminated in uh, the League One in 1983. And um, with some of the stars of that team, they were all stars, um, but guys like Paul Hegarty, Paul Sturrock, Ralph Mullen, um, but they were, they were a great unit. Um, and for a provincial club like Dundee United to win the league, who knows if I'll ever be repeated again, but um, that was a fantastic feat. They all needed each other, so you couldn't fall out with each other. And I think that was the key to success, you know. I mean, it was like us against the manager, but he, in a certain way, wanted it that way. For the, so you've got a group of players that are going to fight together, and uh, that's, well, it worked, didn't it? The whole uh, season in 1982-83, the, the team were going well, and they were up there challenging with Aberdeen and Celtic, uh, and it, it came to... You couldn't have scripted it better to play against your local rivals, Dundee, on their turf at Dens Park uh, on the 14th of May 1983. And you could ask any Dundee United fan in the town, that was a defining moment. Just just to have the sort of the nerves to do what he'd done at that moment. I mean, it was really United's first strike at goal. And I, thought, I remember being behind it thinking, oh, this is unbelievable effort, but it's going to go over. It was a magnificent moment. In history, looking back, but at the time, it was no more than what we kind of expected. Probably 25,000 arms in the place. Uh, to get the ball where he done, just a couple of shimmies and then chipped uh, pretty much 25 yards over the keeper. Just in that heat, it was absolutely fantastic. My Lord, this is the time. Richard Gorman, side of the fence. Well, you clear. Might just get the chip and he does it. A defining moment in my career, really. I mean, everybody, all the Dundee United supporters, remember it forever. And then we got a penalty just after about 10 minutes, 12 minutes. And Eamon Bannon took it. And their keepers saved it, but Eamon got the rebound and put it in. We were 2-0 up. And then Dundee scored. And it was 2-1 at half time. And the game was a really a very good game, but we had done well to win the league, and uh, it was just an amazing, an amazing atmosphere here. Fantastic. An amazing atmosphere here. Fantastic. Watching Rob and, and seeing, seeing him reach the heights in 1983 and the European Cup in 1984, um, you really were saying, this man should be playing for Scotland and regularly. Um, us as football fans didn't see what was going on behind the scenes. Rob maybe had personal problems which we didn't know about, but um, Rob really should have been up there with the, the best of them. He, he was, um, but he, he should have been getting cut for Scotland. There's no doubts about that. I wasn't getting a game. But I was getting brought in for the European games and then getting left out for the domestic games and it just it just got to a stage where I thought, well I've had enough of this, I need to get get out of here. I didn't want to leave. But I just knew for my own sake I had to get out, you know. And uh, eventually they sold me to Charlton. I didn't enjoy Charlton at all, it was a total different setup and I mean I'm not knocking the club or anybody there, but I just didn't enjoy it and I didn't I just wanted out. So I was there for a year, and then I went to Bristol City on loan, and I scored a 20 yard volley on my debut, and Terry Cooper said, I want to sign you. And I said, well sign me now, I said, because I've got to get out of there, I hate it down there. And after the months of loan was up, Terry Cooper got the sack, and Big Joe got the job. And so the reason I went down to Bristol City was because Joe, I thought Joe was playing. The following season, I got a good pre-season in me, and I started playing well for Bristol City. 
and then uh, Aberdeen were interested. Well, there was a few clubs interested, but I knew Aberdeen were interested, and I wanted to come back to Scotland because my son was here, etc., and uh, my family. When the Aberdeen interest came in, when we were up in the plane in the lounge for lunch, there was a piano, and I used to play the Northern Lights of Old Aberdeen. You know, when Joe's coming up the stairs, you know, big Joe's glaring at me, and right? Scott's laughing. And uh, in the end, Joe pulled me in on the Thursday morning. And I knew there was something going on. And he said, uh, he said, he said, there's no believing this club. He said, but in your circumstances, I'm prepared to let you go. He said, but it's not Aberdeen. You know, given it that, like, I've heard you playing the piano sort of thing, you know. And uh, I'm like, oh. Could be anybody, you know. Could be Scunthorpe or someone, you know. He says, it's not with you. He says, Man United. And I said, wait a minute, is he winding me up, Joe? He said, no, he said, you've got the phone to speak to Fergie now. So the phone went. Hang on, 12 o'clock it was. Fergie comes on the phone. How you doing, son? Huh? Fine, yeah, good, yeah. He said, are you, you're playing well now, yeah? I said, I'm getting all right now. Quite fit and not bad now. He said, what do you think? Do you fancy it? I said, well, I can't really say no, can I? He says, right, get yourself up here. He says, I'll wait at the club for you. City and doing very well for Bristol City. Um, Archie and I were sitting, Archie Locks and I were sitting one day and saying, I wonder what it cost if we could get him for a song, he wouldn't buy that one. And uh, we phoned him up and they were looking for 170,000, which, you know, in today's terms is, is very small, but at that time we, we said, yeah, 170,000 seems fair, we'll go ahead. And I go to the stadium about half past five, the third museum, and he said, right, come on, he said, you need to come with me. Uh, I've got a dinner at half past seven, you need to come back to the house with me, I've got to get my dinner suit on, blah blah blah. So we went in to his house, and I was just like that, ah, you know, looking at him. He's NBE, he's OBE, you know, all the stuff he's got, you know, and it's quite spectacular. And uh, I wasn't really listening to him. And uh, he said, go and have a game of snooker with Darren. So we went to snooker and then he says, right, come into the lounge. And he said, uh, Right, this is the way it's going to be off. So I'm still going out, you know. So he's blaring on the way, you know. And, uh, well, he's not blaring on the way, but he's telling me what's going to happen. But I'm not really hearing it. I'm just like, I'm kind of awestruck, you know. I'm waiting all the photos and everything. And I'm like that sort of thing, right. He's like, I'll sign it. And he says, no, 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 no. So he said, what do you want to do? You can stay here tonight if you want, or you can go to the hotel. Mal Donick is in the hotel. So I thought, well, it looks like if you stay at the manager's house, it's like the teacher's pets to the away sort of thing. I said, I'd rather go to the hotel. I couldn't even remember what he'd said about my contract then. Right? I said, just, right there, I'd rather just sign it. I mean, I would have played in the goal, I would have done anything. I would have swept the terrace in for him, you know. But then you walk into um, the press. Now, I'd dealt with the press before, but the media at Old Trafford is quite intense, you know, and you got all these people asking all these questions, you know. And the, the main focal point was how could Fergie bring somebody from the third division to the first division for 170 grand, or 100, well it was 170 grand. And uh, so that highlighted the media questions straight away about my capabilities. It wasn't like he spent 10 million on him. Sure. Uh, I saw him score a few goals at Old Trafford, yeah. play a few good games, so it wasn't like it was a, a disaster. Yeah, um, yeah. But we knew that probably the best, we'd seen the best in our film. I think absolutely. I think Fergie yeah. used him in a slightly different role, but deeper, playing on a, a four as opposed to playing well, as a one. Fergie knew how to turn that up at him. And yeah, yeah, so he wouldn't have been a man. Yeah, so so Fergie's so thinking, well, I'll give it a point and, and see if I can reignite the, the spark. But as far as we're concerned, well, 
I'm concerned he's played for the two greatest clubs in the world and now we've got that seed. Well, that seed any day. <laughs> <laughs> my first goal was against Charlton, which was quite ironic because my debut was against Man United. And all the Charlton fans are behind the... Uh, not the stick for them, the other end. Giving me stick. And uh, I caught this volley about 20 yards out too, deflection, but it was going in anyway. And I was like, yeah, get out of your child. And I hated that place anyway, you know. And when we got to Boxing Day, we played the uh, Forest. And uh, I scored against Forest. And we were second top in the league. And then we went into the Liverpool game New Year's Day. And we pummeled them. And we went 1-0 down. And it was worst case scenario, but for them, not for us, because I think Brian was, Brian was first with the Eagles and our Sparky, and we beat them 3-1, and that was probably the best game I ever played for Man United, but the next day we had to play at Middlesbrough at 12 o'clock the next day, and everybody was nagging, we had to travel as well, and uh, we were poor, and we got beat 1-0, and then it just all went wrong from there. We went from second top of the league. We finished up 11th, I think, in the league. And that was when the pressure was coming on, you know. And it was kind of one of these ones, you know, the end of the season, right? Let's see what happens next season. But it was quite obvious. The manager had a lot of work to do. And uh, so he signed a few, quite a few players that summer. And then I knew then. I'm only going to be a French player now. You hear the manager had a lot of work to do. And uh, so he signed a few, quite a few players that summer. And then I knew then, I'm only going to be a French player now. You hear um, stories since that um, he, he's, he's got the uh, unwanted accolade or probably the worst signing ever for Manchester United. Um, it, it's hard for us to comprehend it up here, uh, just what, what we've seen Ralph Mullen do with your football was unbelievable. Um, it's just a pity the, the Manchester United fans didn't get to see the um, ability that he had here. Um, there's a lot of criticism of, of that signing against myself, against the player and, and Ralph himself also. But he did a fantastic job in helping young Lee Sharp who was development to left back at the time. He did a great job that way. Helped him out, couldn't help him positionally, walked back to protect them. And then I think that goes that, that goes passes over people's head, that type of job he did for us. It's really difficult thing to deal with mentally. You know, I mean, it's hard to look up and say, oh, you're good, the game's over. You might as well pack it in, you know. And I, I don't think I mean, a lot of people have retired recently, but I think, like in my case, and a lot of people ca cases, it's hard to cope with when you know that you can't do it anymore. It's difficult. I mean, even now, I mean, I watch some of the games and you think, I should have been playing there now. If I'm speaking honest uh, about hearing Ralph's story, um, it was frustrating as a football fan to, to hear him talk about um, maybe his personal problems and that, 
um, when you know what he was capable of on a football field. And at the back of it all, I had to stay detached from his, his own story, but on a personal level, um, I just wish he had given himself a shake sometimes and just say, well, knuckle down, you, you've got the world at your feet here. It was like a football and culture, you know, after every game. You get your shower off shade, get out of this and go for a drink with your teammates and have a drink and that was it and then party on. And it was just, in my, in my time, that's just the way it was. I mean, it's totally different now. I've cut down. I'm down in the 14 a day, man. I'm only joking. No, people get the wrong perception with the press, you know. They've got your bill as an alcoholic, blah, blah, blah. I like your drink, but I don't have to go up in the morning and go straight to the fridge. I mean, I could go without it for days, if you like, you know. So I do like a drink, but there's no way I'm an alcoholic. We are all good friends, so well, all my life really, since we were wee boys, since we were about five, six year old. Um, we were brought up together, um, different religions, which was never a barrier in my life, but even to this day, it, it's never been a barrier. And you look at situations in Glasgow and some other cities, and I'm quite proud of the way we've came about it, and we've got in our lives. I'd also always be a, a good friend. Um, if you go for people that's caring and that, you know, he's also always been, he's always looked after me and the football side when it all sort of hit, hit the levels that he did. Um, we used to go all the way, Dundee United matches, and we ended up having better seats than the directors, you know. We were sitting in, in Ibrox one time, we were sitting at the old stand and we are at the very front, leaning on the, the you know, the, the crisscross box that was along the front of the old stand, and, like, the directors of Rangers had, we had better seats than them, they, they were sitting behind us and we just couldn't understand how he managed it, you know, but he always used to just wink and say, like, I've got the contacts, you know, but at school, well, it was always a, a laugh that we had that Ralph got put forward a year at school because he was, because he was so bright and he was brighter than all the other kids, you know, um, and yeah, well done on him, he's, uh, he sort of turned that into think he could, Ralph, if Ralph was not playing football, Ralph could have been and a really top job. I, I have no sort of quibble about that at all. Um, but as I said, you know, people make their own paths in life and Ralph's made his, I made mine and we're here now, which is good. We're both standing here. We've got friends that are not here now. Um, a lot of people have, you know, and well, we're here, so that's good. So I'm, I'm happy with that. No, there's no hidden sort of detail that Ralph's went through about hard times and that, you know, and if you've not got your friends, you know, it's really, it's, it's a hard one for anybody to take and you just really try your best to, to help as much as you can, you know, and so, was we stand here today, any regrets? Any regrets at all? Oh, freezing. Apart from that, it's a bit of that. <laughs> not at all, not at all, no, yeah, not at all. Very proud of, that's, that's one of the Fergie's very proud to have to be clubless to have such good friends as you. I thought it was nice to say that. Well, this will only go from strength to strength off and just hope things start looking up for you and uh, good luck to you. Ah, I think it's going to only get better, eh? Yeah. Do you read? Yeah. No, I don't know that I have a great son. I have a great life. And it's good coming down here, isn't it? Ah, it's great. cold, as I said, but it's absolutely beautiful. And You've got it, yeah. Seeing you've got your family and your friends, that's yeah. it. And I think uh, coming down here, there's no place better, is there? No. Uh, there's no. I've been all over the world and there's no place better than this place. Yeah. Quality of life. Friends. Nice people. Good. Brilliant set. I just feel people that I saw him play at his peak. And for those fans that uh, Charlton or Bristol or Man United who didn't see me speak, who saw him, get saw him. Get Navy Bees. Bill's in the food shop now. It's all okay. We, we, we got the best of them, so too bad. Yeah. I think I would, I would look, so, like to look back on Rob's career and say he, he reached the heights at Dundee United. Um, 
we may never see again. And he was such a standout player uh, of a generation. Um, he played in a fantastic football team at Dundee United. Um, just wish the Man United fans for the problem. Behind my clock. Barcelona, and at Milan, any of them. It doesn't get any bigger than 